Hi guys, I'm Cheryl from Pixis Creations, and I'm here today to show you how to do a very easy um, acrylic pour painting. You can do it, your kids can do it, it's pretty easy. Now, um, before you go out and buy all sorts of like fancy mixing mediums and all that stuff that you see in the craft stores, there's some easy things you can do with stuff you have around the house. Um, in the past, I've used things like this, which is like um, decoupage glue, like Mod Podge. Um, I've used Mod Podge. Um, but today, I'm going to use this glue. Uh, it's Jot White Glue that I got at Dollar Tree. So it was a dollar. Um, I'm going to use an 8x10 canvas. This one, I had a painting I didn't like, so I cleared it off, and we're going to use that for today. Now, you can get canvases at the Dollar Tree as well. I have seen them there. Um, first order of business is figuring out how much paint you're going to need. So this is math, but it's really not that hard. Um, basically you want about one ounce of paint for every, I don't know, for me it's like 16 to 18 square inches. That's what I like. That's the consistency I like. So basically what you do is you multiply eight times 10. What do you get? You're right, you get 80. And then you're going to divide that by 16. Um, and so 80 divided by 16 is about five ounces. So you're going to want about five ounces of paint after it's been mixed. So, and I'm going to show you first how to mix it. Um, and just so you know, all I'm using are like these acrylic paints. These are actually the colors I'm going to use. Um, I've got Purple Iris by Apple Barrel. This is a bigger bottle, but you probably have seen these little bottles. This one's Mediterranean Blue and it's my studio. Um, you know, I probably got this at Michael's or Walmart or somewhere. Uh, and my favorites are the Deco Art Dazzling Metallics. This one's copper. Um, copper does some really cool things. It creates something, or copper, metallics tend to create, for me anyway, um, cells, which are like little bubbles of color that come up, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is another, this is a Craft Smart paint. It is pale blue. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to mix one because I've got also a Deco Art Americana and it's cool white. You just want to make sure that they're acrylic paints. I mean, you can get these for 50 cents to a dollar, depending on kinds, but make sure they're acrylic because um, those work best. So what I'm going to use, we see these little like bathroom Dixie cups. Um, this is what I'm going to use to mix the paints in. So what I do, I don't actually do this, but um, if you feel like you need to, I mix my paints two to one. So two parts glue, one part paint, and then if I need to, I put just a little tiny bit of water in it um, to thin it out some. So I'm going to draw lines. This is not, um, it does not have to be a scientific. When I first started doing this, I did, I measured it out. I measured ounce by ounce by ounce and marked everything, but it doesn't have to be that. So I'm going to put with my Sharpie, I'm just going to put those are probably far apart. I just put three little lines. So I know that I'm gonna do glue for two parts. I'm gonna write this on here. And then one part paint. I don't know if you can see that. So two parts glue, one part paint. Um, it's cold in here, so everything's a little thick for me because I'm in my garage and it's December, end of December. And even though I'm in North Carolina, it's still a little chilly. And I'm an Ohio girl to begin with. So I'm just gonna pour my paint in. Usually I eyeball it. I don't usually use the lines, but, um, so I pour my paint, or my paint, my glue, up to the second line. So that means that I know now that I can add my cool white um, Deco Art acrylic paint. Remember acrylic, make sure it's sh shaken. And then you'll stir. And sometimes when you open it, especially if you had it for a while, it's got those dry bits. Get those dry bits off or there'll be chunkies in your paint. Um, if you get really serious, you can get a really fine strainer or something real meshy and strain your paint to get all of the clunks out. You can do that with your glue. Um, if you advance on and decide you really like it and you want to start using like Floetrol, which is what a lot of people use to do their pore paintings. Um, you can strain that. I tend to be of the pick it out when I see it ilk. 
right now, so we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this paint in, and it helps to have a little light behind you so you can see your lines. So I am pouring that paint in. So I poured my paint in and now I've got, it's filled up to the third line and I'm gonna put my paint aside. And now I'm getting out my fancy, fancy stir stick. These, you can usually get packs of these at Dollar Tree. Okay, so apparently my video died, so hopefully I can figure out how to edit these together so that I don't start over each time. We're gonna see what happens. This is new to me. Okay, so in case you missed it, fancy dancy stir stick. Um, you can get popsicle sticks at Dollar Tree, you can get them anywhere. And it doesn't matter what size. I just, these little ones I happen to have. So I'm stirring my glue and my white paint. Now this, this is a little thick for me. It, you want it kind of runny. So I've got water here. Um, you can use a spoon, you can use whatever. I happen to have these handy dandy little um, pipettes. Makes me feel fancy. And I just put a little bit of water in a time you don't want to put too much water in it at a time, like put just a little tiny bit at a time because if you put it too much, then you're adding more paint, more glue, and it becomes messy. So still a little thick. You want it to be, for me, I like it to be the consistency of warm honey, um, you know, where it's runny, but it, it leaves a little bit of a ribbon when it hits the bottom. Um, that one's still a little thick. I'm gonna put a little more water. This white paint must be thicker than some of my other ones. And each paint's gonna be different. So, and you'll find, if you do this more, you'll find the consistency you like to work with. Everybody has their different measurements. Everybody has different. So one thing, I tried looking it up and I was trying to use everybody's, um, like everybody's formulas. Well, I couldn't because everybody's formulas were different. So it was like, ooh, so I just found one I liked and I stuck with it, um, got started watching, hooked on videos by um, Mixed Media Girl. If you've not seen her, check her out. She's pretty cool. Um, she does some really rad stuff. Okay. So that's, that's probably got some bubbles in there. Probably pretty good. It's hard to see, but it flows off. Um... This is probably better. It's probably thickened up a little bit, but like that. So the next step is I'm going to move my water because I will spill it in a hot second. So this, this cup holds, I think it holds about six ounces. So um, this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to do what's called a dirty pour. Now a dirty pour basically means I'm going to layer the colors in my cup. Um, sort of how I want them. Uh, it's not an exact science acrylic pour painting. Um, takes a lot of practice and even then you don't get <laughs> exactly right. But it is fun. It's fun to play and you do get some fun stuff. So we're going to fill this one most of the way up. Um, and the last color, the first color you put in will be the last color out. Okay. So I'm going to just go ahead and add some paints. I'm going to start with just a little bit of white. I'm going to pour in purple. Now, some people like me, I like to do white between each one. I don't know why. It's just what I like to do. So I'm going to put white and I did that purple. Now I'm going to do that darker blue color. I'm going to do a little white. I know this is the exciting part. It's actually kind of fun to watch it in the cups. Um, I'm going to do some of that bronze. My bronze was a little thick, much like my white. Um, I'm gonna do the white. And I'm gonna do the light blue. And then I'm gonna do the white. And then I think I'm gonna go through this time, because I'm running out of white. Um, I should have done more white, but that's okay. This is all, you know. I'm gonna put the colors in without the white between them next time and I think that'll be okay and I may be short on my paint again I was I was a photography major and a um, I, I took a lot of creative writing classes so math not my thing um, 
And just so you know too, this is messy. I don't know if you can see my apron. My apron is messy. I'm messy. I'm a messy art person. I'm a messy everything person. But, um, so, all right. This is really going to be pushing it. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to use some of my already pre-mixed stuff when we get to that point. Okay, so I have parchment paper um, down under my painting. I also have just this, I have a nicer, not nice, by no means nice, um, vinyl tablecloth that's got the fleecy backing on it. But you can get, like, at Dollar Tree, you can get just those plastic things to cover because, especially if you're doing this with your children, you will make a mess. I can guarantee it. So, this is one of the easiest ways I have found to do this, okay? You put your canvas on top of your cup. You hold it there, and then you flip. And then you tap a little bit, and you let it set for a minute. Well, it sits, let me tell you a little bit about Pixis Creations. Um, not really, it's not really Soul Switch, but Pixis Creations is something I've been doing for a while. I dabble. I like I love finding new art things to do. Um, I, do, I discovered watercolor not too long ago, which I love. Um, I just kind of do my own thing. And then I discovered this acrylic pour painting during the big quarantine, COVID-19. I didn't mean to put that in quotes because I believe in quarantine. But, um, and so my daughter, who it just turned 13 a week ago, and I, just over a week ago, started, she started doing pour paintings with me. And we actually started to sell some of those, which was kind of cool. And then um, we started to use the skins, which is a whole nother cool thing. Um, the skins are basically the dry paint that you um, peel up off of, uh, like the parchment paper, the paint will peel off of whatever. Else. And you use those and make jewelry out of them. We make necklaces right now and um, keychains. Um, so my son and I, who he's 16, we do that together. So this has been kind of cool. So like I said, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use some of my paint that I already have mixed. If you can see the messy apron. Um, so I am going to use, because I have it, I'm going to use some blue. Um, so just now mix a little more paint than I did. I was trying to save my glue. Um, to buy a lot of glue. You can get at like Walmart and stuff, those giant things of the glue wall, Elmer's glue wall, and those work. So I am going to tap, tap, tap. I just like to tap it, get it all out of there. I'm going to put a little bit of, ooh, my paint is cold. It does not want to come out. It's probably also clogged. I haven't used this one in a while. Again, be careful with the chunks. So I'm going to do just a little bit of paint around the edges. Because when there's paint, um, it gives the other paint stuff to uh, glide over. Now, because I feel fancy, I'm going to use a stick and just sort of spread this around a little bit. Um, normally, I just use my fingers, but I have a feeling I want to touch my camera here in a little bit. And that's another important thing. Have paper towels or something you don't mind getting messy around to wipe your hands on. I like to get those boxes of, um, oh, the, the shop racks, like you can get them in the automotive section and stuff. Those are kind of cool. All right, are you ready for this? Okay, um, I'm gonna probably tilt the camera a little bit and I'm gonna move some stuff because whatever. Okay, bear with me people. Okay, I'm gonna pull you closer too. I'm gonna try to do this without breaking everything because that wouldn't make my husband happy it's his ring light okay are you ready you ready for this here we go i'm gonna pull it up oh yeah that's gonna be plenty of paint and you can see i don't know if you can see but there are air bubbles um and i think it's just a because it's cold b because if you want to eliminate air bubbles for the most part let your paint sit after you've mixed it for a while just let it sit for a few hours or whatever um, so I'm going to let this spread on its own for just a few minutes. Now this is where it gets messy. All right, you ready? Now, this is the fun part. You just start tilting. 
and you kind of watch it. Now, there's all sorts of things you can do. People like to um, tape the edges. Some people don't like their edges to get messy. Um, I like the paint to kind of flow over the edge. I like the painting to continue. Um, you will get messy. You, if you're a person who, or your kids are people who don't like their fingers messy, gloves, you can get gloves, just those cheap gloves, which I think are easier to find now than they were back in April and May. Um, but you can see, I mean, it's just sort of dripping off. And you can tell too that I don't know what I'm doing with the camera here. Although, oddly enough, I was a media production major. However, that was when we still used tape and such. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, which I'm gonna do now, because sometimes I'm just not bright. I like to put a couple cups down. Um, since I've done it this way, my husband has built me a whole little thing that helps me. Now, okay, so I probably did not need the blue on there, but you know, I'd rather have too much paint than too little. However, you don't want too much paint on your canvas. So tilt, tilt, tilt till that paint comes off, okay? Um, get the edges. If you have too much, it might crack, which also has its own cool stuff involved with it. But, um, so then on the edges, you can touch it. Just tap, tap, tap. This is kind of cool. I like having the camera. I can see what my back looks like. Okay. So I've got all the edges. I'm going to pause this and I am going to wipe the tons of paint off my fingers. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and then I will come back with a close up. Um, there are lots of air bubbles. You can use a toothpick. You can, you know, um, leave them. You can use a pin. You can do what I'm doing. Just touch them. So I'm just going to see what happens with them. Um, there's some that's probably from the first time I did. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to pause and we'll be back in a little bit to check, take a look and see what it looks like. Alrighty. Here's a close up. It has been, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. I think it turned out pretty swell. Love to hear what you think. Mm -hmm. I need to hear my sound effects. <laughs> Remember, if you guys do something, I would love to see it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Rem Cheryl from Pixis Creations. I'm here in Durham, North Carolina. And the only way to do art wrong is to not do it at all. So keep that in mind. Just have fun, make a mess. And um, I'd love to see what you do if you do anything. Thank you. Bye.